But since I brought up themes, let's talk about those for a moment. Themes, in terms of media, are described as the poetic meaning behind the story being told. It's the subject that's explored throughout the narrative, usually done as a means to teach a life lesson to the audience. The reasoning behind Luke's character arc in The Last Jedi was to teach people about how failure is a great teacher and something for us to learn from. It's been referred to by many as the theme of the movie and why it's such a great film. But the problem starts to rise when the theme is being prioritized and glorified at the expense of writing quality. What do I mean by this? Well, remember how I said earlier that people weren't focusing on the writing quality of Luke's character arc in the film because they're too fixated on the idea of him being a more deeply flawed character who's different from the hero he was built up to be in previous films? That's the same problem with themes. It happens when people are overfixated on the topic being explored in the story because they see it as something they relate to, but don't take the time to actually think about how the story represents that topic. Well, you can't really treat those as separate things, my guy. If a theme isn't being represented well, then an audience is going to have a harder time picking it up. That's what not representing a theme means. It's part of what makes the writing good or bad. If you're going to call something bad writing within a good theme, you need a reason the writing is bad other than because I said so. I'm not even here saying that something having good qualities in one area erases the bad qualities it has in another, but that works inversely as well. You're trying to say something having bad qualities, which as I pointed out, aren't even as bad as you say, erases the good qualities that people are saying they like about the movie. Things that in their mind are more important to them than the things you're complaining about are. See, that's what you're telling them, but your core complaint isn't even that. Elements of this overall topic that you introduce make sense, elements of it don't. But I feel like it's going to be easier to explain if I just let you continue. Let's use Steven Universe Future as an example, where the show suddenly decided that it wanted to explore serious topics like PTSD and mental illness. Now, I would personally argue that this is an important topic to teach children, but Steven Universe Future has a very poor understanding of how mental illness and PTSD works, and cheapens it for the sake of drama. Now, I don't think I have to explain why it's a bad idea to represent PTSD by making the character suffering from it out to be a homicidal maniac. It's really not an accurate reflection of PTSD. There's actually a lot of people with PTSD who say the way it was portrayed here wasn't honest and respectful. Okay, first of all, it, it was bad because my friend with PTSD said it was bad. No, I, I, I know this isn't the point, but this is the overall problem with all your listing of examples of other media. They don't do a good job a lot of the time expressing this in relation to Star Wars. And you would be much better served talking about what Star Wars does that fails its theming. Like... Characters don't learn from failures for sometimes, for example, or if it's presented in a ham-fisted manner. It requires an actual analysis in order to dissect what it does good and bad with its theming. That's why people make video essays on the topic instead of giving a quick blurb about it. Especially on that last part. Because you're right, there are comments that say that they were extremely bothered by this. There are also a lot of people who disagree with that sentiment and like what the show did. There are people in the middle who like some things and dislike others. There are a lot of people with a lot of different opinions, with different reasons for those opinions. It's almost like... PTSD affects different people in different ways. It still doesn't work here because Steven's PTSD is never actually explored. Instead, it's used as a plot device for him to get angry at the other characters and stir up the conflict. Yes, because using something as a plot device and exploration of the topic are mutually exclusive things. In fact, as I've shown earlier, a line of dialogue or even a visible action on screen can mean multiple different things. Even the angle of the camera can hold meaning. But this video isn't about Steven Universe. So why keep harping on it when I know you're not going to give any details? And instead of actually exploring his PTSD by having a scene where he talks to a therapist, they just say that he got a therapist off screen during the final episode and didn't even bother to have the therapist make a physical appearance. Rebecca stated that she didn't have Steven's therapy on screen because it would invade his privacy, but it's pretty obvious that she was just too lazy to write it. Okay, I'm gonna admit that part of the reason I'm holding back on this is because I didn't watch all of Steven Universe, and I don't feel like delaying this video even more by watching a six-season television show for, like, two minutes of material, but this shit is pretty basic. I barely need to know anything about the show to understand what's going on here. Steven's PTSD is, in essence, the result of being the main protagonist. As Rebecca Sugar put it, his life has been in danger so many times that everything becomes a life-threatening situation in his mind. It's him being exposed and the center of conflict that caused him to have these issues. So instead of exposing him even more to the audience, 
they chose to express the closure of that chapter, albeit in somewhat of a meta way, by letting the audience know he's getting help and letting his struggles move away from the camera. The camera is, in a meta sense, what caused all of this, after all. So, you know, you can try and interpret it as laziness all you want, but it sounds a lot more like a deliberate decision when you think about someone being the center of attention as the cause, and thus the solution is to create boundaries, even if those boundaries are with the audience themselves. Hey, more importantly, what does this have to do with- And Steven faces no consequences for any of his actions during his pink outbursts, even retconning the dramatic weight of gems being shattered by immediately bringing Jasper back to life. It's still a kid's show, dude. At this point, I kind of want to skip until you say something, I don't know, maybe about Star Wars? It also doesn't help that his PTSD is being treated with a group hug, which is like trying to put a band-aid on a gunshot wound. People try to defend this by saying that the hug itself isn't what heals Steven's trauma. It's meant to represent how he doesn't have to deal with this by himself because he has friends and family to support him. It sounds like a nice sentiment, but having friends and family to support you isn't what heals trauma. Healing trauma requires effort from the person suffering from it, looking for a solution that's healthy for themselves and others, like talking to a therapist or getting proper medication. You know what else it fucking requires? A fucking support network. Like, I'm sorry, the fact that you immediately say this. Steven only does one of these two things after he killed someone and nearly destroyed the town. And because the therapist thing happens off screen, it doesn't actually take part in the story. It's almost like what the show depicts isn't the fucking recovery. It shows how his trauma affects him, and it shows the beginning of him setting on the right path, intentionally stopping before the continuation of that path, because the point is to show that it's okay to reach out for help, and not that PTSD can be healed with hugs. Why, why do you think the mention of him going to therapy is there to begin with? Steven doesn't take the time to recognize the problem himself, and other characters are handling it for him. Recovering from PTSD requires the patient to feel comfortable with themselves. Having friends and family to tell them they care about them doesn't equate to the patient feeling comfortable with themselves. N no, it doesn't. But, well, for one, I want you to think about that root cause again. The root cause is Steven being the center of conflict. Episodes of the show even depict Steven feeling the need to solve everyone's problems. In this particular case, the affirmation that you have support and are loved is, once again, the start of the path, and is depicted as the start of the path, even though the rest of the path isn't fucking shown. You can do that. Implication is also part of storytelling. What you choose not to show can be just as telling as what you choose to show. And if it equated to feeling comfortable with himself he wouldn't need the therapist so you know it wouldn't be mentioned that he has a therapist and don't even get me started on the fact that him turning into a monster is taking the metaphorical and turning it literal so the hug is an indication that they don't see him the way he sees himself so he doesn't have to be scared or make mistakes and be human and that's from not even watching the damn thing and just understanding how fucking symbolic storytelling works in general. Oh yeah, and one more thing, almost forgot, kind of important. What the fuck does this have to do with <laughs> The Last Jedi suffers from a similar problem. Not that it's covering a serious and touchy topic, but rather it's trying to use a certain subject as the driving force for the narrative. It tries to use the theme of failure being a teacher we have to learn from as a means to hand wave away the incohesive writing involved in how that theme is being presented. I understand the notion of teaching people to learn from failure in order to engage in self-improvement, but the situation surrounding Luke's failure was a result of him being stupidly out of character. There's a right way and a wrong way to do this, and Johnson did it the wrong way. So, you admit it's not anywhere close to a one-to-one -one comparison. All of that Steven Universe talk is completely pointless. We're not even talking about themes that are similar in nature. We're not talking about themes having the same problem when it comes to writing. And your complaint is still implying that the one thing being bad erases another thing being good, when that's not how that works. Good theming also shouldn't erase Luke being portrayed out of character. Even though I already proved that wrong too. Remember the stuff I went over regarding all the times Luke messed up in the OT? Those were already great examples of learning from failure to engage in self-improvement. And during the OT, his character wasn't fully established yet. Okay, but the mistakes being made were... different... mistakes. And part of the point of making Luke learn from failure again is to present another part of the theme. No matter what you think you know, you can always learn from your failures. That's why it's important for Luke to be the one who made the mistake here. 
In addition, Luke's mistakes before didn't cost people their lives, at least not in any meaningful degree. In this instance, he's facing much more dire consequences. Consequences he may not know how to handle, as well as the consequences from before. Closest he got to a mistake coming, costing him even, a, even really a single life is Obi-Wan dying because he didn't run away fast enough. But even then, he barely knew the guy, and it wasn't a bunch of kids that he was responsible for. We're in a new segment? Why the fuck are we still on this? By the events of this movie, Luke was already involved in a journey about learning and improving from failure, and is now an established character. Now he's basically going through the same thing. But because the circumstances are shallow and derivative, it just feels like his character is retrending old ground and he didn't actually learn anything in the OT. The difference between the OT and the ST is that one of the situations for why he went through these emotions had a better setup. And even if this is the one you want to go with, you can keep the learning from failure bit without being offensive. So in other words, the theme itself is fine, but all the problems you had that you already mentioned. Uh huh, I see. You know what? <laughs> Rey was even able to stump him by reminding him he saved Vader by being different from other Jedi. Luke has no response to this because he knows it's true. It's just because of plot convenience he decides to remain stupid about it. Or maybe he didn't just instantly change his mind because... I mean, imagine the scene going this way. It was a Jedi that was responsible for the creation of Darth Vader. And a Jedi who saved him. Oh shit fam, you're right, let's go fight dudes. Yeah, that sounds like natural dialogue, huh? The theme of failure being a teacher for Luke to learn from falls flat because he's not in character at any point in this whole situation. I cool, I can just start skipping several minutes again. I'll see y'all in like 30. So the excuse that this movie has an important theme to discuss doesn't work because it's not being supported by a good story. A theme is not some sort of get out of jail free card for derivative and incohesive writing. Oh for fuck's sake! Bro, I just put the rice on. Are you fucking serious with this shit? Okay, so you're right. A uh, good theme isn't a get out of jail free card. Spot on. However, it is still a positive trait. This right here is outright proof that you're trying to use negative traits to erase positive ones. I'm even going to ignore the fact that your negative traits are either mostly or wholly imaginary because... It doesn't matter whether they are or not for this point. If someone is saying it's a good movie because of the themes, and that's all they're saying, you have good reason to call that out. That is them using the theming as a get out of jail free card. Like, I, I, I think you pointing out that it's not a get out of jail free card is a good analogy here. And, and that's because bad writing isn't jail in the first place. See, jail is for crimes. Bad writing is not a crime, except when we're talking about a contract not having proper punctuation or something, but details. Do you know why bad writing isn't a crime? Because, for one, that would be the dumbest law in the history of society, and would, ironically enough, probably get the person who drafted such a law jailed for writing crimes. But also because you can't really prove bad writing in court, what's the objective measure of bad writing? B but let me go into the courtroom for a second. Um, actually, this is starting to sound like my jurisdiction. You know what? Good point. Right. So here's the thing. Even if we were to establish the tort of insufficient prose, civil or criminal, then at trial, both sides would need to present a case based on the jurisprudence laid out in said law. The closest analogy I could bring up is the YouTuber's best friend, Title 17, Section 107, here to refer to as the Fair Use Code. The Fair Use Code consists of several factors of analysis to consider in determination of whether the use of a copyrighted work would be considered fair, much like any statute in relation to what we're talking about would include factors of analysis in determining whether the pros would be considered insufficient. Now, in trial, both sides bring evidence in regards to these factors. We'll refer to yourself as the plaintiff, and I'll represent the defense here. Both you and I have brought evidence to support our case. We both need all of these things to make our case so that the trier of fact can come to a decision of, well, I guess we'll use guilt or innocence in this case since the assumption seems to involve incarceration, although it sounds like it should probably be a civil tort, really? Anyway, we both need all of this evidence. One piece of evidence doesn't outright win the case on its own, no matter what movies might tell you. So you're really only right in the sense that no singular piece of evidence is a get out of jail free card, Mr. Pony. There's only one get out of jail free card in law. And that's money. 
Themes are like the sprinkles that you use to decorate a cake. It's not supposed to be the cake itself. Those sprinkles could be sent to your bakery straight from God, but it's not going to matter if the cake tastes like shit. Whatever theme you're trying to get across with your story doesn't matter if it's executed in the worst way possible. Wasn't one of your huge complaints that Steven Universe didn't properly explore PTSD and instead used it as an excuse to create conflict? You know, as a finishing touch, like sprinkles on a cake. It's almost like themes are fundamental to a work and saying any one aspect is supposed to be the cake itself is insulting but that various elements of writing should be considered different ingredients. If anything, CGI is the sprinkles. Like, seriously, what is it with people I cover and bad food analogies? D do I just need to make Gojo Ramsey a permanent character? Themes by themselves are not good enough. They need to be supported by a story that properly represents the message it's trying to send. You can have a theme as complicated as religion being corrupted by individuals who want to exploit it for personal gain, or a theme as simple as spending time with your loved ones and valuing the time you have with them. But if you can't write a cohesive story that isn't riddled with giant plot holes and horrible characters to save your ass, then you might as well throw your theme into the trash bin because it's not gonna be worth jack. Okay, so let me just approach this complaint from a different angle. Is the reason this theme didn't work because the character of Luke Skywalker was poorly written? Or was it poorly written specifically because it was Luke Skywalker? Let me present a hypothetical to you about this movie to get across what I mean. So from the beginning, we're not looking for Luke. We're looking for, I don't know, let's say Mace Windu's somehow alive or something. Every single other plot beat is the same. Maybe we even use the fact that he's failed a student in the past before Ben Solo or something on top of it. So does this still fail? Is the theme still horribly executed with bad writing? Sure, you pointed out a few other pieces of what you thought were bad writing, but well, we just keep coming back to the fact that it's Luke in this video, don't we? Now, there's a reason I point this out. If we remove the fact that it's Luke and treat Luke as though he were someone else, then a lot of your problems just go away. You could argue that he's written as a not very good Jedi Master, but the explanation of him getting caught in his own hubris actually works fine to justify that. So. If at the end of the day, it's because it's Luke, then that means that even by your own metric, it didn't fail as a movie in general, but rather specifically as a Star Wars movie, which, you know, doesn't actually detract from the theming at all, really. Again, this section is supposed to be about how the themes are bad, but here you are talking about the exact same shit that you've been saying in every other section. For those who don't know, I made a video last year discussing the repulsive Netflix movie Cuties, and all the ways it makes me want the virus to kill us off so a more deserving species can inhabit this planet. Oh, and, and of course, you talking about other movies for no reason and shilling your own content for fuck's sake. I'm less shameless than you! And it's part of my gimmick! One common defense that people were actually stupid enough to use to justify this movie's existence was that the film doesn't actually support the exploitation of minors, and that the message of the film is supposed to be against it. The theme of the movie is about how kids in our society are being sexualized and how we need to be made aware of it, exploring how media can influence children in a negative way, how parents need to pay better attention to their kids, and a sub-theme about forging our own identities. The thing is, none of that matters because of how horrifying the movie is. Aside from having a terrible story with terrible characters, the movie is actually engaging in the very thing that it's supposed to be against. It tries to send a message about how it's bad to exploit kids, but that doesn't change the fact that the movie itself is exploiting kids in the process of sending its message. This was a very delicate topic that needed to be handled as responsibly as possible. Cuties didn't do that and accomplished the exact opposite more than anything. Look, I'm not gonna go into the quality of QB... QBs? Look, I'm not going to go into the quality of cuties specifically because I haven't seen the movie, as you can tell by the fact that I initially pronounced it QBs, but saying that it fails because it's showing the thing is stupid. And remember, you said it was showing the exploitation of children as a separate thing from bad writing when you should be able to point out how the writing glorifies these actions instead of demonizing them, which makes it somehow less relevant than usual to what you're trying to say about Star Wars, by the way. Amazing. 
And then the defenders will say, Oh, but we need to show them the truth and how uncomfortable it is because the message it's trying to send is important. Did I ever say that it's not an important message? No, I didn't. It is an important message. But there's a right way to do it, and this movie is not the right way to do it. The solution is very simple. If you want to raise awareness on society trying to exploit underage kids, don't make a movie with close-ups of underage kids' rear ends while directing them to dance like strippers while dressed as prostitutes. It's really not that hard. It's like Maimona Dokuwe was given a list of things to not do to make sure this movie wouldn't be gross and horrifying beyond human comprehension and just thought to herself, how can I fuck up every single one of these? Then how do you get the message across that this is destructive? Like, okay, I'm gonna actually compliment a movie I really hate for a second to make this point. So, you know, fuck Misanthropony. So, Megana's Missing is a movie that exists. It's about the dangers of online predatory behavior. It's also really, really bad. But one thing I think it does in order to get this message across is at the end of the movie, showing imagery of a girl being tortured. It's horrifying, it's shocking, and it's also very effective. I mean, I see YMS's complaints on this whole thing. I get the point. It is kind of an easy way to grab someone. Although I'd counter that by saying sometimes the easy method of getting the point across is the one you should actually go for. Now, I will say this. The Netflix cover art chosen was probably not a good call. Even without watching the movie, I think promoting it with an image like this serves to glorify rather than defame. But... Uh, yeah, that decision has nothing to do with my Amuna Decore. Yeah, fun fact, your French is awful, since that was made long after the production of Mignons, which you show the original poster for in your fucking video. So, you know, it's almost like the glorification aspects are 100% on Netflix. <laughs> Themes don't work without proper execution. And The Last Jedi fails at this drastically. Praising a movie for its themes when the movie ends up being terrible is the equivalent of saying, sure he messed up, but at least he meant well. It's nothing but a lazy buzzword at this point. You mean like you pointing out how in your mind these other works have problems that are actually related to the theme itself, suffering and execution, but when you come back to Star Wars, it's just, Luke's not written to act like Luke, therefore theme's bad. Like, okay, let me make a point for you, my guy, because you seem to be struggling to say anything of relevance, even though you've been at this for what, two and a half hours. So Ray going to Kylo Ren, she's in essence making the same mistake that Luke did before in spite of Luke's warnings. This ties into the theme of failure as a teacher. It's an example showing that Luke has learned something from a past failure and also gives a chance for Ray to fail and learn from it. But she really doesn't, does she? In the case of this failure in particular, we don't really get a chance to see her learn from this in this film because her next two appearances are just her showing up to save the resistance because protagonist in the very next movie where she's making the same mistake that she made in this movie multiple times. So that's a good example of the film's writing hurting its depiction of this theme. Now, now say something like that. If you hate this movie so much, I'm sure you can come up with another example, even if it sucks. Come on, give me something to work with other than the same point repeated for an hour plus. I don't even know where the hell this even came from, but this whole obsession with themes has become such a poisonous mentality as it represents a complete disregard for writing quality. I... Themes are part of writing. They are an element to writing a story. Do you not know what writing is? It's the same problem as style over substance. Remember when James Cameron's Avatar came out and people obsessed over how visually stunning it was? Then a few years later they realized they forgot the movie even existed because it was actually a boring slog to sit through? And the visuals were just a distraction from how sloppily written it was? Well, let's take that situation and apply it to The Last Jedi. Only instead of obsessing over the visuals, people are obsessing over its theme. Those are... Not even close to a one-to-one -one example. Like, for one, Avatar also had world building going for it, but the actual plot was forgettable because it was just dances with wolves, but with blue people. Like, again, how the fuck do you think themes are expressed? It's not some tertiary thing. It's a crucial part of your story having cohesion. It is the foundation of the fucking story. 
prioritizing the theme over everything else is rule number one of how to not critique movies, TV shows, or any sort of media. If anything, it's turned into a pathetic excuse to justify a story's poor quality. A quick and easy way people try to make themselves look more intelligent and insightful than they actually are. Like they're trying to say, you just missed the point of the story because... Uh... Reasons. If someone were actually saying you missed the point and didn't explain how or why you missed the point, that would be fair. But that's not what's going on here. Kind of like, you know, you not saying how the movie fails in executing the theme and instead talking about a characterization over the course of a franchise. Like, since you like repeating arguments so much, I'm surprised you haven't brought up the Ray is a Mary Sue thing again. That actually would be a good way to demonstrate this, even with your twisted logic. And you can do it in one sentence. How does a character that suffers no serious consequences learn from failure? The theme doesn't work for Ray as a protagonist because she doesn't fail. I can counter it easily and have earlier in the video, but it would at least tie your problems with the writing quality into the actual thing you're supposed to be fucking talking about. I don't know how this is a hard thing for people to grasp. Themes should always take a back seat to the story and characters. As a writer, you can go fuck yourself. Like, for one, the theme is the point of the story, so how the fuck are you supposed to put the driver in the back seat? I am not even disagreeing with you that a character's action should make sense for the character, but part of what makes a story is how the individual character interacts with the theme. See, when you say that, I know for a fact that you have never written a single piece of prose a day in your life. Brandon Sanders once said, Ideas are cheap. An expert writer can write a New York Times bestseller with a terrible idea. A novice writer can write a piece of trash with the best idea in the world. First of all, it's Brandon Sanderson. If you're going to quote the man, you should probably get his fucking name right. You should also have, you know, paid attention to the thing he said right before that in, in that speech. Well, a certain quality of idea is important. And throughout that spiel, He's talking about willingness to throw out ideas as well. That also isn't actually about themes. Like when Brandon brings up ideas, his example of someone taking a bad idea and turning it into a great novel is Pokemon mixed with the lost Roman Legion. These are on a whole different spectrums of thought. Like an idea and a theme aren't exactly mutually exclusive from each other, mind you, but they aren't exactly mutually inclusive of each other as well. Let me explain that a little further with one of my earlier examples. So I pointed out how this didn't work with the theme, the idea of having Ray mirror Luke's bad decision from his second film. But the problem comes from the fact that it doesn't really tie in very well with what comes after. Now, in that lecture, Brandon specifically uses the analogy of chopping at wood and trying to get something to come together and having it be a slog and how a good story will include moments of inspiration that are part of the depiction of writing being mystical in nature, but probably be a better story overall because you worked in order to get the various flashes of inspiration to work together and rewrote out some of the pretentiousness. So... In the context of what Brandon is actually talking about, it's throwing out the idea of mirroring those two moments and coming up with a new way for Rey to fail, or throwing out the idea from Rise of Skywalker because they don't work with the character arc, and yes, that can mean throwing out a theme and coming up with a new one. There's also the line between how a critic looks at a finished work and how a writer looks at a work in progress. I've thrown out and added tons of ideas for the series I'm working on and for Boon Cannon itself for that matter because they sounded good but I just couldn't really make them work or I had something else that works better. Meanwhile when I'm critiquing a work I look at what I'm reading or watching with a different lens than I do as a writer. When I'm writing, I'm trying to fit pieces together so that involves changing pieces when need be. As a critic, I'm trying to analyze the work itself, so I have to look at how the pieces fit together as they are, which involves taking a look at how each piece is shaped and how it coincides with other pieces, as opposed to th throwing it out and trying to find the right piece to use. In other words, pointing out something having good theming is part of what makes a movie good or bad and outright dismissing it because there were elements that you didn't like in the film that are across the fucking board in different shapes is absolutely ridiculous. Media is not about the novelty or juxtaposition of themes, no matter how poignant they may sound. 
It's about creating good stories and bringing those stories to life to get you invested in the worlds they create. It's why franchises like the original Star Wars movies and Lord of the Rings are still celebrated, even decades after their release. They created something very special, and they were created by people who care deeply about storytelling as an art form, instead of just using it as a mouthpiece for their worldviews. The themes were secondary nature to what was truly important. The story, characters, and world building. And so is Fight Club. Fight Club is also heavily beloved years later, and the theming is the central focus of that, with the characters and story being built around the theme instead of the other way around. I'm even going to ignore the fact that the science fiction writing has evolved over the years. Star Wars was one of the first, if not the first, large-scale multi-film franchise. Oh, and we want to talk about how important themes are here? Okay. Let's do Lord of the Rings first. The temptation of great power not striking a bell for you there? Think about almost every conflict in the fucking series. Think about how the entire crux of the franchise is built around fighting over the One Ring. How tempted by power people are throughout the series. And how that temptation grows when someone has gotten a taste of it. We see it in every fucking stage of the Lord of the Rings franchise. It informs the events that we are actually shown with the world building that for the most part is cut from the movies getting used as window dressing. So then let's talk about the OT and its theming. On top of it being a coming of age story, something that inherently focuses on theming more than storyline, mind you, there's also, the theme of family, various aspects of what being family means, seen in every single fucking movie, as well as the franchise as a whole. You can try to argue the theming took a back seat without explaining how it did all you want, but the fact of the matter is, you are, fun fact, full of shit. Even fucking Shakespeare wrote his story with a theme in mind, you absolute fucking hominid. If you want another example, there's also The Dark Knight. <laughs> you can argue that the movie has a theme about believing in yourself and going out to make a difference in the world, in spite of authorities going against you and saying that one man is nothing compared to the system. <laughs> The Dark Knight is the kind of movie The Last Jedi tried to be and failed, because it doesn't allow its themes to overshadow and dictate the story. Wait, you're being serious? Why? Yeah, first of all, the theme isn't succeeding when everything is against you. That's what the fucking plot is. The theme is an exploration of the gray hues of morality. What separates a vigilante from a terrorist? You either die a hero or you live long enough to become a villain. The entire movie is built on how and when of this exact concept. That's the theme, my guy. And here's the thing. The story and characters were built around this theme. The Joker turned people against Batman to make him into the villain, called Batman the cause of Gotham's problem because that's the type of villain this theme called for, one that would call out Batman's questionable morality directly. Batman's line that I quoted a moment ago was from this movie. Like, for fuck's sake, why the fuck do you think Two-Face's origin is in this movie? Anyone who argues that a movie is awesome because it has themes might as well say that it's awesome because it has sound. It's like saying a pizza was good because it had good toppings even though the actual pizza was garbage. You could just apply that themes excuse to any piece of media and it would be just as valid. First of all, this is a flat out straw man argument and I don't mean Scarecrow. See, that's the thing. You're conflating someone saying the movie has themes with someone saying that the theme is a good part of the movie when that's not the same thing. Like I said, nothing is the cake, everything is ingredients. Second, I like how you flip flop back and forth between talking about something, just having a theme and having a good theme because that's not what anyone is saying. For example, the tweet you even show how Luke's character expresses the theme, and that's something they like about the movie. Meanwhile, you're presenting a bad theme to an episode of Family Guy that was ruined by its theme it wasn't because the theme overshadowed the story either it was because the theme was bad and again this is you flip-flopping between you talking about something having a good theme and just having a theme at all which is not the same thing and i'm pretty sure you fucking knew know that and are just being a dishonest prick oh my god the side of rachel that came up stank pussy hoe i 
I was done. I was dead. I was deceased. I needed to be dragged out of the room. My corpse on the floor. I was resuscitated to be here right now. A mess. A mess.